Tuesday, May 2nd, with somewhat advanced kids, uh, children who had to leave, we miss you. Uh, book, this is yours, right in it. Um, and you're going to want to not lose it. So this one is yours to write in big letters in there. I recommend writing my name in there, writing your name in there, because the more you can do to get it back to me, to get it back to you, to make your life easier. Globetrotters also have copies of it, so that's when you have to make sure it goes to me. If you don't put my name in it, it might get returned to Sturgeon. So this is my way of trying to help you, but yes. This is your book that you get to keep and love and cherish forever and ever and ever. And to go along those same lines, yes, I am aware this is a big book. Good news is there's a lot of extra fluff in there that we get to cut out. Uh, one, I think there's like five introductions, um, and we're only going to read one of the five introductions. The other ones are just an introduction to the introduction, and there's one about the 30th in it anyway. And then there's also multiple epilogues. We're only reading one of the epilogues. It also has part of the sequel in there. We're not reading the sequel. It's optional. It's a thing you get to do for extra credit if you enjoy it. But I will tell you, with what's left over, there's still a lot of book left. But, do you guys know what abridged means? No. Yes. Something you walk on. That's a bridge, not abridged. Yes, Caleb? Shortened. It's the shortened version. This is the abridged version of the book. This is the short version. This whole thing? Guys, it's not even that much. So, or the... Or Correct. What is when you like to complain about things? They like to drag everything out. But yes, the full version is roughly 1,500 pages. And so that is the version that we are not doing. We're going to talk about it, but we are doing the broken down much, much shorter. Plus, this is considered the all action version. We're doing the abridged where they took out all the boring parts and just left in the good parts. That's actually legit what this is called. It is called the all exciting parts version. And so that's what we'll be getting into with it. We're just saying just watch the movie. Uh, which we get into it. Now, for those of you who are aware, there is a movie. The movie is chapter five of eight chapters. So they took one chapter to make the movie, which was one part of it, and then the rest of it is going to be all the other parts that we'll get into. So, and if you've not seen the movie, I recommend it. If anything, it'll give you visual things to see. It is a genius and great movie. It's why I chose to do the book, because after seeing the movie when I was your age, I found out later on that it was a book, and I had no idea. And then I read the book, and I was like, holy crikey, that's a good book. The, the 15,000 page one? No, 1,500, not 15,000. Uh, but no, I read this version of it, because when I discovered it, it's actually Mr. Sturgeon who pointed me in this direction. And the reason I choose this book is it wraps up my class quite well. Um, this book has a lot of sass in it, um, whereas <clears throat> the narrator, uh, basically his way of telling the story is by making fun of people. I have no idea why that would appeal to me, but for some reason it does. Uh, and so if you have enjoyed my class at all this year, it kind of culminates in all of this. Plus, this is getting you ready for eighth grade. Because you guys keep telling me how much you don't like to read. Well, here's the good and bad news. The book you see in front of you is about as long as some of the books you do in 8th grade advanced. The bad news is the 8th grade advanced books, their teacher doesn't care to make them interesting. So imagine a book this big, but without the interesting parts that go into it. That's what 8th grade advanced is. So this is that part where if you are wanting to do 8th grade advanced... Um, what if you got me to 8th grade teaching? Well, being as I've been teaching the same thing in the same room for 24 years, it's not happening. I have no desire to teach 8th graders. I'm quite happy where I am. Yeah, I'll make some Oh, the squeaky chair, that's the worst. Yeah, can you change rooms? So back to here. Uh, I did put Camp T up on there, so it is up on Skywars, good night there, along with yesterday's test and sermon. Uh, I did learn from reading your sermons uh, a number of things that you guys hate, like people who walk slowly in the hallway. Uh, facts or teachers. teachers. Yeah, there was a number of people, and homework, shocker. Uh, luckily, no one wrote, I hate reading this time, but apparently that might connect to the homework. Don't people do that? Uh, if you read through the sermons, they did. Facts teachers. Um, uh, facts teachers and science teachers, I saw that also. I know. 
All of that's probably not gonna. I'm guessing by the time we get through you having to read this book, we can add English teachers to the whole thing too. Never. So be it. And then we do start. This is the last thing we are going to do. You are correct with how much time we have left. That one. All right. Here's how I look at it with this book. Those of you who are going to actually read the book, it's a fast read. Once you sit and do it, I've had kids who literally knock this book out in like two days. If you're a kid that doesn't hate reading, it's a fast read. If you're not going to read, no offense, I don't care about you uh, as far as this goes. Because if you're not going to read, it doesn't matter at my time frame. So I figure, yes, we have about two and a half weeks to do this book. For those of you who read, two and a half weeks is plenty of time. For those of you who aren't going to read it, I can give you a day and it's not going to matter. So I figure it works out as a good balance of things from there. Uh, I do know it's long. I will try to read as much as I can with you in class, but a lot of this will be you guys having to read some things on your own. Again, next year when you guys get to eighth grade, and I hate having to say that because it means you're going to leave me soon, but they don't do things like reading out loud to you and all these little things like giving you audiobooks that I do because my heart is the size of a giant walnut. Uh, and so I'm trying to get you ready for next year for the teachers. Their hearts are not walnut sized. What's up? Uh, is there a Broviart? Yeah, of course there's Broviart. And hopefully we'll get to some of it today. It's no Broviart. Like I could teach about that. Gussie. So at the beginning of the year, you said that like you only, you never really like, you tend to not like students. Yes. But you just said that you're going to miss us. Yes. So like. I also say I lie to kids a lot too. His heart's a bigger one. <laughs> so part of what we're learning this year is learning when do adults lie to us and when do adults not lie to us. Uh, pretty much that'll be what this book is going to help you learn also. As we get into it. So it'll help you all kinds so of So maybe you lied about you not like I know. Yeah. So and now you have to start thinking lie. which parts were the lies and which parts were not the lies, and it gets so confusing. Mythology was all yeah. lies. It's it usually just really works nice. to just give up. Drop out of school, start yeah. figuring out how to change the fryer oil yeah. of Burger King, and you'll be good to go. Let's see. So we're good to go on that one. All right. So with book, one of the reasons why I like book, uh, I mentioned that it has sass in it, which I am naturally attracted to. Uh, this book is a form of satire, meaning it's a form of where you make fun of things. The types of satire, exaggeration, incongruent, I don't, you guys don't care about that. Here's what you're going to care about. Examples. So these are fairy tale retellings. What Princess Bride is, it is a fairy tale. It is going to deal with a princess, it's going to involve a prince, it's going to involve bad guys and good guys, and fighting and killing and death and love. This book does have death in it. It's got a lot of death in it, like real death, death. Uh, it also has love in it, uh, but again, hopefully by this point, you've learned what kind of love I like. Uh, so it has love that I approve of in it. It is not going to be a simple retelling of a fairy tale. If you've seen Disney movies, those are retellings of a fairy tale. Now imagine you take a fairy tale and you filter it through the mind of someone who is sassy. You're going to get something like Shrek or Hoodwinked. Oh, I hated that one. Oh, that movie oh, is a movie, all right. Oh, if you hated Hoodwinked, well, then yes. you're probably in for a really bad movie. Oh, that movie was a masterpiece. I love Shrek. So, this book is very similar to Shrek and Hoodwink. Um, and the idea that it's a fairy tale, but it is making fun of fairy tales while it doesn't. In Shrek, they make fun of fairy tales because the prince is a bad guy. Uh, the good guy is the ogre, and then the princess turns out to be half ogre. It's our hashtag spoilers. Uh, and so that's what Shrek is. It makes fun of fairy tales. Hoodwink did the same thing. It was the idea of a fairy tale, but through the eyes of like a mystery movie. And so it was that same idea where it goes through and sort of changes it and makes fun of things. That's what this book will be. The issue is, if you watch those movies and never laugh, you are not going to laugh in this book. But there, this book has humor all through it. And you're going to see me probably laugh throughout the entire book. But much like when we watched Monty Python the other day, and you guys may have been like, this is the dumbest thing ever, you may, this may go right over your head, and you're just going to stare at me blankly. I have no idea. This is where we sort of get to tell how much you understand obscure and 
humor and stuff like that, and we'll find out. Donkey. <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, uh, I think donkey. I actually say the word donkey in here as a curse word at one point. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, there's, there's trouble in the hood. Oh. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So, with this one, we can start flipping past pages. If you look at yours, Yay. W. Mr. Groviak. So, do you see all the pages that have X's and V's and I's? Yeah. Skip all of those. Yeah. I don't. Oh, no. What? Look at the bottom. Where it has X's and V's and I's. When I first did You are going to eventually get to a page number that says XLIV, and then the next page says The Princess Bride, and then if you turn one more page, well, XLIV is 44, right? There you go. This is the one, that's the page we're going to start with. Mr. Brovic, XLIV is 44. No. Maybe. I don't know. Sounds like a number. Roman numerals are hard. Alright. So, we are reading an introduction to this book. Because if we don't, it gets really confusing. Do you or... Obviously you do. In Gospel, all of the footnotes... This one, if you flip like far into it, let me see if I can find a page where it has it. This one doesn't have footnotes as much, but it has parentheses. And also, so if you turn to page 237. 237? That's a big number. Yes. So on 237, do you see how it's written in italics? If you turn the page, it goes back to normal. There are two people talking throughout this book because it turns out this book was written by a guy by the name of Morgenstern. He's the guy that wrote Princess Bride. At the bottom, where it says Goldman, he is the guy that rewrote it. He took a long version of it and chopped it down to a short version. There we go. And then every once in a while, he sort of comes in there and explains bits. And if we don't read the introduction, it gets real confusing. I tried doing that one year because kids complained, and I was like, all right, we'll skip the introduction. And then they spent the whole time being confused and complaining. Uh, and as much as I like confused, complaining children, we're just going to have to push through the introduction. Which isn't bad. It's him making fun of people, uh, like his old teachers, which after reading your sermons, you should enjoy. Because in the first three pages, he makes fun of his teacher. And he also makes fun of his son. He doesn't like making fun of kids. Yeah, sounds like my dad. The drawback is, normally I don't let you guys read on your own until we get to chapter two. If you, but tomorrow's math I learn, you're going to legit have like an hour and a half of free time tomorrow. Because tomorrow's I learn is short. It's where they give you like five questions and you respond to them. And most of you are going to get done in 30 to 40 minutes. So most of you are going to have an hour and a half while you're there. It is up to you. If you want to read ahead in the book, you can. If you don't and you want to wait for me, that's fine also. I'm telling you now, end of book is in two and a half weeks. So you can sort of figure out the mapping of things as best you want to and stuff from there. I'll try to be as nice as I can to you as we go through. <sighs> All right, let's begin. Page, I don't know what page it is, one. It's just page one is like 60 pages in. See, now if you hold it like that, you're like, look how far we've already gotten. I'm a champ. I'm sure there. Cut off at the end. A big chunk of So at the end, let's see, just so you can go ahead and figure it out. So we don't do that one. Don't do that one. I think 358 is where we start. Is where we stop, is 358. So you chop off that end at the end also. Tomorrow we actually get a chance to start reading together since. Class periods are short, and this is kind of crazy. I don't like Which is fine if you have. 